Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Back in Oxford County, Ontario today, talking soybean fungicides this time with Ken Kerr, from, agronomist from BASF. Ken, how's it going? It's going great, Bern. Sun shining. Yeah, sun shining. Hey, and the beans are growing. And I can't really say that's been the case this spring. It's been an odd season, a lot of uneven variability, slow emergence. But as we go in to fungicide season, Ken, how do things look? Yeah, generally speaking, all the crops appreciated a little bit of rain we got over the last week depending on where you were and how frequently that rain came the good news is it was nice and gentle so the crop certainly jumped and uh, some of those late emergers on the uh, on the soybean side are up and going and the stands are starting to appear a little bit fuller now so yeah definitely need some regular rain to thicken them up but nonetheless Pretty They're good, on pretty way. good. Hey, um, lots to talk about on fungicides, but I, always conversation always starts with white mold. You know, uh, what are the things we need to think about? Obviously, m looking at the risk. Yeah, so white mold, obviously big yield robber if left unchecked in those high pressure scenarios. So uh, I think first and foremost, we wouldn't think of white mold today. We've been in a, you know, a dry drought situation for the last six weeks, seven weeks. Uh, in particular through most of the month of June. So white mold might not be on top of mind, but again, we've seen weather patterns change. I think really encourage producers and agronomists to be familiar with their field histories, yeah. right? They know the fields, whether it's residual fertility, history of manure, uh, lay of the land, you know, you see forest behind us, right? And with a, with a little bit of a kettle in the field. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, spots like that that are gonna get white mold, yeah. use your field familiarity to, to kind of be the first part of this decision. And then a lot of those growers have, have religiously used a white mold program year after year and even in the dry years have experienced a benefit and um, you know work through that ROI decision and, yeah. and stick with that plan the high risk scenario the moderate risk scenario is gonna be a little bit more challenging to work mm -hmm. through and we're gonna talk fundamentals in a minute but mm -hmm. I want to talk about yield potential here mm -hmm. because uh, it's kind of all over the map but you know when it comes to soybeans yields made in August yeah. and you don't <laughs> want to give up on a crop when the rain's coming up. Yeah, exactly. We, we've seen, uh, we've had lots of experience with soybeans that look terrible in the early part of July, whether it's, you know, herbicide response, whether it's weather patterns, crusted soils, uneven emergence, all those reasons that beans take a kick in the teeth the first month of their life. But, you know, from July 25th onward, if we have good fertility underneath them, we have a nice stand, they're well managed, and we get timely rains, beans make yield in the last half of the season. And that's really important for the, you know, fungicide, by definition, plant protectant, yeah. right? So it's a plant protection decision, it's a disease management decision, and remembering that that yield is made later, and really to manage the crop and not the management by guessing on the weather. Yeah. Hey, and uh, these things can sneak up on you. You've got to be aware yeah. and watching for flowering. Yeah, so we just passed the summer solstice here in the last few days. Soybeans are photosensitive, so they want to start flowering. Some of them are starting to flower now. Uh, I want to remind producers that you know, that uneven emergence, it isn't like a grass crop like corn where you so definitely see those staging and counting leaves, etc. those differences. Beans tend to even up a little bit throughout the growing season, so that's the first thing. Second thing, you know, I, I'm a believer that in a two-pass program, that white mold product comes first, that true white mold product, it's a preventative approach. That's basically at first flowering, you're not too early, right? We definitely want it on by R2. I would rather be a few days earlier than later. That's that's coming up here, right, in the next week or so. So there's a decision to be made there on, you know, do we want to get started on that white mold regimen or not? Uh, you know, looking at the stand, looking at field history, looking at environment, and then uh, following up with that Strabilion mix product later at R2.5, R.3. Final question for you, Ken. A lot of things going on in mm. this crop, things to manage. Um, can we make this a multi-product, multi-purpose pass? Yeah, you raise a great point because, you know, here today in late June, we're still ch uh, struggling with some late weed control, right? Crop's been slow to canopy. The weeds grow faster than the crop does. So we've got late weed control going on. These types of years usually lead to a question on, can I tank mix fungicides with herbicides, you know, a late shot of glyphosate or something like that? Can I mix it with the group one graminicides for volunteer corn? And of course, then there's the foliar fertilizers that go in there with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you can put in there. And then now let's add number four, which is what if we have soybean aphid? Can I put a, an, uh, an aphicide or insecticide product in there? I generally like to have two things in the tank only. Right. So then you've got to prioritize. And we mentioned the importance of that soybean timing. Um, and then obviously, you know, 
if there is a need for late weed control in fields where residuals didn't activate or the crop canopy just hasn't held the held it down after the residuals peter out, we've got to work through that part of the decision. And obviously aphids, we're looking at thresholds as well. The good news is is that the the insecticides and the fungicides are generally friendly friendly products when it looks at when you look at how they behave on the crop and how they behave in the sprayer tank. They mix well, and you don't see a lot of a lot of impact on the crop. You start getting into a third product like a foliar fertilizer, which is going to act as a sticker, or the glyphosates, which have strong surfactants in them. The fungicides already have a strong surfactant in them because we're applying them to a to a reasonably big, big crop with thicker cuticles. So you have to watch when putting more than two products in the tank and figure out what your priorities are at the time. Start getting into three or four products yeah. in the tank, you're going to you're going to run the risk of some significant crop response. Mm. Hey, uh, Ken, some great insights. Always a pleasure to have you on the Soybean School. Thanks for taking the time. Oh, thank you, Bern. Appreciate it.